Welcome to the poetry reading, the St. Louis Park poetry reading. This is a reading for people who live in St. Louis Park, who love St. Louis Park, who grew up in St. Louis Park, and who live on the border of St. Louis Park. <laughs> so we stretch things a little bit. And in our um, audience, we have many people who I know and just as many people who I don't know and haven't met before. So really, welcome. This is our fifth year of doing readings, and we're trying to make it more, um, to increase the number of readers. So we're really happy tonight to see many new readers and some of the people who have been reading for years. And one of our readers has grown up right be before our eyes. She's been reading for the last couple of years, Ruby. So we've had readers from the age of six to the age of 90 over the years. So just to give you an idea, we had kids and adults and people reading all kinds of things. And tonight, I think we'll have just as much of a varied reading um, for all of us to listen to. So we have a number of readers. And I've asked the readers to limit themselves to a few minutes. And then if we have time, we'll circle around and you can read again. How does that work? And I have one biography, but I don't have everyone's biography. So if you want to <laughs> say something about how long you've been writing or where you're from or why you like to write, just to give us some idea of who you are. But again, I'm going to honor the time and ask you to keep it sort of limited to three minutes or so, so that we can fit everyone in. And then when it's over, when we have time, Maybe we'll take a little break and come back, and if you want to read some more. OK? So with that, um, I usually kick off the reading and read a poem or two just to warm everything up. So is anyone nervous? Even I'm nervous. Nobody's nervous, so you're nervous. Good. Nervous is good. So, um, so I'll read a poem, maybe two poems. And I'm Diane Pecoraro, and I've been the community poet of St. Louis Park for the last five years. And I thought this idea was the most wonderful, brilliant idea, and it wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> I told Susan on the way in, Susan uh, Schneck, who's the director, founder of Friends of the Arts, that I really thought this idea was something very special to have poetry in the community and to invite people in the community to come and read. So I wish it was mine, but I've been lucky enough to be associated with it. So this first, pain, this first poem is a poem I've never read before out loud. It's called Painting Left Behind. And the thing about this is that I collect paintings, and I love art. So. Um, and I usually find orphaned paintings in the garbage or at a thrift shop or something like that. So this one is called Painting Left Behind. From far away, the painting looks important, even propped carelessly against a light pole, not quite straight, asking some passerby to stop and have a look. A dignified painting, standing alone on a Saturday night in the final hours of a garage sale on a busy avenue of ethnic shops and eateries with handwritten signs. At the sighting, I break and back up, surprising the cars behind. There is no curbing the excitement of this find, this radiant orphan set out on the curb. Close up, the painting, a cityscape, spills a yellow river and muted buildings across the large canvas with splash. It's minutes to closing. The owner wants an offer. The image draws me in. The price is right. <laughs> then reason whispers in its way. Too large, won't fit in the car. <laughs> Daunting those heavy bolts needed to mount its bulk on the wall. I look again long and longingly, walk away, painting an eye part. No dilemma about how to hang it, no need to borrow someone's van, gone the worry about location. The painting's bright splendor is left on the road to be tossed into a dumpster or stored in the dark corner of a closet 
it had an audience for the last minutes of a summer sunset. Some time later, one must ask, what does practicality have to do with art? And how does reason fit with a flutter of the heart? And one more, um, I used to work in a very big government organization. And one of the interesting things about working, all of you know, is gossip, right? Gossip when you have coffee and gossip. So this is called rumorology, and it's a, a rhyme, very short. Whispered secrets in the halls, coated staccatos in restroom stalls, expanded in elevators, hinted at a meeting, sighs, rolled eyes, implied in every greeting. You know those roles. Um, stories, tidbits, tales of folly, transitions, transfers make work life jolly, embroidered by the cultured, passed on by the uncouth, sullied only by something as boring as the truth. <laughs> Our first reader tonight is Michael Amon, who I've never met before, has been a self-published writer since 2005. In his two most recent novels, Amram distorts history and applies it to his characters' lives. He is an avid poet with two published collections. His poems and short stories have been published in magazines. Currently, Amram is revising a memoir. It concerns his growing up in a family that was unusually active in the DLFL party, notably their support of Eugene McCarthy and the anti-war effort. The book weaves in detailed information on the Vietnam, Vietnam War. Sorry. Um, let's welcome Mike Amram. Great. Hi. Hi. It's Mike. Uh, read a little bit. Um, the first poem I'm going to read is uh, ab about love. Uh, it's about springtime uh, and fi finding love. You know, the, the feel after rain when things are new and uh, you realize what you have, and don't don't take it for granted. It's called a vowing love or a vowing nature. In April, some days after rain, when pores are all open, for the skin that's leaky and cold in spring, sometimes tar rises, tar smells rise and steam rolls of skin dimpled and with dents after rain. When mist and meadow shine anew and streaks of sun find shadows that eluded you after the rain, the rain prisms its so its boughs can make curtain calls. Roads hid the pastures and rains, wispy folds where you walked and held hands with her then. What sands were moist and shriveled in cracks of blacktops like tiny dunes your lover used to climb through to hold hands. You reached out for her with fingers pale, wrinkled, and quivering after the rain. You squeezed her slender frame. You lifted her from the mist to drain. You savored her, love you thought she felt was not assumed to be the same, but she vowed to you after the rain. And th this this poem is uh, it's about a uh, poetess, um, a beat, you know. The the real thing, you know. Every every poet has a voice, and then that's the most important thing in poetry to find your voice. Um, and she was what they call a spoken word poet. It's called 
the genuine article. Her time became too fast at 21. She passed her days like shining trains, clack, and entice hobos to run towards light. Through tall grass pulling daisies, through months of May, through boxcar slats spinning splintering sun, her spoken word poets are those mute to clacking wheels that chase time. She is a poetess, a mouthpiece for Greenwich Village's vacancies, who smolders a cigarette ember in Cafe Wa whimsically. She reads her voice, and her voice echoes while she crosses time and space once more like a wizard of McDougall Street, whose embers light the boundaries of eternity. Our next reader is Jim McDonough, who is um, who was on the board of Friends of the Arts and who also is very instrumental in running the theater in St. Louis Park. So, um, Jim. Thank you. Really glad to be here tonight. I guess I've been writing since third grade, which uh, maybe by my uh, look, it, it, quite a few years ago. Um, but I've been, um, you know, I learned to write and I learned to write well. The title of my poem tonight is Tatanka. Tatanka, bison, buffalo, the four-leggeds with many names, provide for us from horn to hoof, our food, our robes, our medicine. Thundering herds across the fruited plains, decimated by two-legged locusts with their iron horse, leaving only hunger, the silent enemy of the people. Tatanka, part of the sacred story of strength and perseverance, honoring Mother Earth and all her creatures. Their legacy is our legacy, then, now, and forever. Our next reader is Angela Griffith, who has read in other poetry readings that we've had, so it's great to have you back. It really is. A long time goes by between our seeing each other, but it's, it's good to see you. Angela. Thank you. I always like to be back here with these poets because they're, they're always, always good. So. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read a poem about butterflies. Um, it's called, My Mother's Birthday Brings the Butterflies. Butterflies appear unexpectedly, like messengers from the other side of life, sometimes bringing fleeting flickers of remembrance, perhaps kisses and caresses of a lost mother's love. A message to remember the good times, Soft-winged Geminis signal transition, change, and eternal indecision. Butterflies are seen more often and most clearly when one is alone deep in mediation, sitting peacefully in a garden or walking along a wooded pathway. Butterflies are quick flickers of colorful wings floating past, sometimes landing on a shoulder, an arm, or unsuspecting basking back, sending a moment of joy or calm, stop, think, love, remember, decide. Butterflies are symbols of a spirit that is free. Try and catch one in cupped hands, but why? Why trap freedom, beauty, and love in a bottle or a netted cage to die alone? 
Only an angel can mount a butterfly and travel from Minnesota to Mexico, catching the winds, cheating the sun and rain, stopping to wash each morning in the dewy leaf. Only an angel would dare mount a butterfly and travel the length of a continent on its back, not once but twice a year, playing like a snowbird on the back of the beautiful monarch. Butterflies appear unexpectedly like messengers from the other side of life. Soft-winged Gemini, they bring signals of eternal change or indecision. My mother's birthday always brings the butterflies. Thank you. Our next reader is a new reader, and I think we're in for a special treat because he may be reading in another language, or at least part of his work will be in another language. And his name is Desalane Borena, and how did I do? Okay. <laughs> um, and I know Desalane because we sometimes sit in the same room at the adult education program in St. Louis Park. So, Desalane, you're next. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, yeah, as you said, my name is Desalane. Well, I think I guess you can give me like some more minutes to introduce myself, where I come from. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm from Ethiopia. I've been here um, since almost five months now. I'm pretty new to St. Louis Park, so I did not grow up here, but I live here, so hopefully I'm going to live and settle here. And that's why I decided to join you here tonight. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> thank you. Um, my first poem is um, says Life talks about life. It's not too long and it's short. Listen carefully. Um, yeah. Life is a football game, happiness and mystery, sometimes a defeat, sometimes a victory. White and black days, we're no same gown. Monday it goes up, Tuesday it goes down. However bad your days be, you will not miss your share. Don't cry when you lose. The gain is also there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is in English. So mm -hmm. I have also um, in Oromo. Oromo is my native language. Uh, I don't know how many of you know that we have, uh, I think, more than 40,000 Oromo um, uh, population living here. So if you hear some word before, I'm going to read. That's okay for you. But if you if you don't know, don't worry. I'm going to translate it. I'll give you rough information what I want to say. And the topic is about America. It says America. So when we say in Romo, America, America is America. Um, <coughs> be a democracy. Be a olkituma. Kanama wolin chalchisin. Kanama hunduma. Be a democracy. Be all kituma, can namo in Jackisin, can namo in Duma. Jalala Garci stain, Hundis Tigodane, Rako Garagara of Rawarane, Jerkabo Fijare, Achis, Sijare, Rako Biadafa, Unrabarare. Why can keep soof? Jichat not the kata, Biara Kohundaf, Katati Fumata, Daga Gijradu. Bara hanga bara. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna translate. Yeah, yeah. so it says America um, talks about America is a very democratic country, um, which gives, which respects the rights of everybody, individuals, where individuals are equally um, treated, alike, in a very special manner, alike other countries, Africa, Asia, even Europe. So the first paragraph talks about uh, the democratic situation in this country that all of you know. Um, second one talks about 
the love America has shown to the immigrants which come here and settle here and grow up here. And third paragraph talks about, um, like, I don't have words to explain the love that you have shown all the immigrants that are coming here and settling here. Um, in fact, some of them change radically from very poor to rich, uh, contribute first develop themselves and develop and then develop in America. So it says finally, long live America. God bless America. Our next reader is an experienced reader and has read several times at the poetry readings. Um, you probably won't believe it, but it's true, right? A few times. Our next reader is Ruby Livan. Hi, I am Ruby Levan, and I am in fourth grade. I'm 10 years old. Um, this is my second time reading at a poetry jam, and I hope you like my poem. It's called Spring. It's really short. Spring is so sweet, it lightens up my year. Spring is so great, so everyone should cheer. Spring is the time that little flowers bloom. Spring is the season. I need to clean my room. <laughs> Thank you. You may get the big laugh of the evening. <laughs> um, our next reader, if she's willing to read, grew up in St. Louis Park and professed a love for St. Louis Park. And um, sometimes I'm the lucky recipient of some of her poems. So are you willing to read? Sharon Zweigbaum, let's welcome Sharon. Well, I have never read in public before <laughs> a poem, although I've been in public before with moderating programs and things. And my only other writing, other than sometimes poetry, is art historical theses and brochures and art reviews and that kind of thing. And this poem um, was based on my feelings in having visited my son for the first time who lives in the smallest of the U.S. Virgin Islands, St. John. And I don't write poetry very often. I have to feel it and I have to have something to say. So so it could be 10 years between <laughs> poems. Anyway, this is called Balcony View. Sunday in St. John, I'm awakened by the coo-ah-coo-coo of island doves that flutter in treetops outside my window. A billowing breeze orchestrates huge palm fronds above vibrant hummingbirds who provide counterpoint to the sway. Church bells peal and suddenly a Caribbean shower mists down on metal rooftops, making the multitude of green leaves glisten. Just as swiftly it ceases. Left with gleam and jewels in midst of foliage, I marvel at saturated hibiscus hues, pink, gold, ruby, and fuchsia. A minute later, rain again, hazes, cruise bay, grays the azure water, low clouds obscure islands beyond, and curtail hope for long-range whale spotting or a glimpse of a dolphin or two. From my balcony perch, I focus on iridescent hummers bobbing banana quits and earth-toned thrashers who wing about bougainvillea and trumpet flower bushes. On my terrace rail, tiny twig-like lizards dart about. Looking down, I spot a rust-colored mongoose scurrying in and out of brush in search of edible tidbits left near this small resort compound and the popular restaurant next door. I am the tourist mother, visiting from a northern climb. Finally, in my 70s, I maneuvered a visit to this paradisical island to see my son, who migrated here a decade ago through serendipity 
and settled into self-sufficiency and satisfaction. After my inn's outdoor buffet breakfast, shared with friendly faces, I wait for his call with the day's agenda. I read, write, and plumb patience, for he adheres to island time. <laughs> I don't know when he'll show, so I go with the flow. We have already traveled the length of the small hilly island. This serene virgin is a preserve dotted with sugar mill ruins, stunning beaches, and roaming mules. We explore by pickup truck, traversing steep, winding, potholed roads. <coughs> Bays are active with ferry boats, yachts, tourists, and residents of every ilk. Happy Hour presents painkiller rum drinks, <laughs> but Sun prefers beer. The week's revelations. Most residents in St. John know my son, like him, and think he is good people. The fist bumps, hey man, and bear hug greetings elicit, this is my mom, and broad smiles beam forth at each encounter. I intuit that he is important in these good friends' lives. <coughs> Excuse me. And that he is, this is my first trip there, and he's, I haven't seen him very often. And that he is somewhat beholden to them. He has forged family in a faraway place. Contentedly, I linger in a lush sanctuary till we can start another roving St. John Day. <laughs> That was as good as being there. <laughs> this is her Franz over here. Our next reader, Susan. We have a very wonderful poet next, Susan Budig, who always reads with us um, right from the beginning of the project. Susan. Thank you, Diane. I have three poems, one is, I'll stick with two and we'll see if we have room at the end. The first is uh, somewhat of a haiku, along with our theme of spring. Rasta willows sprout, chartreuse dreads, northern hemisphere springing. And I wrote that when we still had a willow tree. Sadly, we had to take it down, but yeah, it was wonderful to watch as it greened up. And the second poem is titled Egg. It is a Fibonacci poem, which is a mathematical formula. And it counts syllables. Egg. Pea, cock, peahen, laced like gems, one iridescent, the other a geode with its feathered jewel incubating at 99 degrees. 28 days pass. Crack. Peep. <laughs> Susan always knows about very exotic forms of poems and how the syllables fit. So if you want to know anything about it, really ask her. She does know. Our next reader is Wendy Skinner. And Wendy. I hope I get this right, has won a Minnesota State Arts grant to do some work up in Ely um, on wolves. You can say more about this. Why don't you say more about it? Um, welcome, Wendy Skinner. Thanks, Diane. Um, yeah, I'm a, mostly a short story writer, and I've done some quite a bit of creative nonfiction, but um, a little bit of poetry. And I was thinking about, I've been away from St. Louis Park for a few months, and so it's kind of nice to have a homecoming. And I was thinking about, what is home? And with your families, my family, both my parents were raised in Iowa. And so we were the, the only family that was in Minnesota who would come down for holidays and in the summer. And so we were always a big deal when we arrived. And hanging out on the farm and all along the roads was a, a new thing for us. So we learn a few things. And so at the end is this kind of a moral story. 
or poem, City Sisters Lesson. Dust clouds hover behind the passing John Deere. I walk with my sisters to the elderberries. Go in a little further. Janie disappears into the overgrown ditch. The dust has yet to lay its thick hands. We pick, we pluck, we fill the potato pot, our fingers purple with berry blood. Grandma presses inky extract through the sieve. Janie pulls air through her chest. Juice simmers black, steam coats the windows in bridal lace. The Iowa sun sets. Mama dips ball jars using hot dog tongs. I ladle hot, tarry syrup. Diane caps each pint with a golden halo. Janie sleeps with a whistle. Life buzzing through a wax paper comb. Specks of chartreuse flutter from her hair. Never pick elderberries where the giant ragweed grows. <laughs> So we've gone through round one. Is there anyone who came in late who wants to read? And I'm going to suggest that we take a few minutes break and so you can each meet each other. I think that's kind of fun to say hello if you'd like to to somebody in the room. Then we have a couple of announcements and we also are going to say if you have another poem and you want to read it, we have time for another one. How many of you do have another one? I know Susan does. I can do one. Okay, good. All right. So let's take a minute or, well, a few minutes, and then we'll come back in five minutes and we'll reconvene.